Welcome to Living with the Times. Today we're going to explore the incident of the spies in the Torah portion of Shalach that were sent to spy out the land of Israel before Israel is about to enter into the land. And 12 spies were sent, one from each tribe, and 10 of them came back in the beginning, they, they, they said good things, that the land is productive, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, it's beautiful, it's fruitful. But then they said that, that we saw giants there, the cities are well fortified, and we can't do it. We cannot go into the land. We will be defeated. And the people listened and were totally discouraged. And from that comes the, the, call it the punishment or the measure for measure that we ended up wandering in the desert for 40 years instead of going right into Israel as God had promised we would be able to. Part of the description of the spies which intimidated the people, they felt intimidated. And the verse says that in, in, in comparison with these huge people that we saw there, giants, we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And thus, we were like grasshoppers in their eyes. So from this, we learned a very, very almost classic general principle of, of psychology is that the way that we perceive ourselves is the, what we broadcast to the world, and that's how the world relates to us. Because the verse says that in, in our eyes, we felt like small, insignificant, um, about to be a victim and therefore, that's how they looked at us. So this is such an important idea for every person, is that the, the way we think of ourselves, our own self-esteem, and of course, this is not a recipe for a bloated ego. It just simply means how important it is for a person to have a positive attitude about themselves. And when they carry themselves with a certain amount of confidence, a certain amount of joy in being alive, a certain sense of self-esteem, well, people will relate to them in that manner. But then we could see the opposite as well is that many, many times a person is influenced by how others think of them. In other words, let's say in, in a relationship, the other person looks down on us or thinks that we're, we're not qualified, that we're not together, we're not, uh, we're not fulfilling our potential, we have all of these faults, and we start believing them. We start believing what other people think of the, uh, us, even if it's really not appropriate, but we're affected by the way other people look at us. So it actually works both ways, but either way, it's all dependent on our free will thought process. In other words, if I feel good about myself, then ultimately it protects me from the influence of other people maybe looking negatively at me, not because of anything of me, it's because they have a certain level of negativity that they are broadcasting to me. And the opposite, that when a person uh, shines when a person walks with uh, confidence, 
And as I said, this is not a, 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 a formula for building up the ego out of all proportions. It's just simply having a good opinion of ourselves and the way we think is the way it will come back to us. This is what's called the measure for measure. This works throughout creation. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so here we're being taught that we should, we should hold on to positivity. We should, we should look well at ourselves. We should look well at other people. We should also, not just ourselves, but if we think good about other people, well, other people will pick up on that and feel good about their relationship with us. So as always, the Torah has such incredible advice for us. And I bless us all with having a positive attitude about ourselves and the world around us.